Welcome back to The Open, and welcome to a special half hour here on the program. This week, if you've been watching, we've been leaning into the theme of love. Happy Valentine's Day, by the way. Specifically, stocks that some of our guests love. And we had spoken with Ms. Schneider and Joanne Feeney about some of their short-term buys and long-term holds and stocks they wish they had bought, but maybe they missed the chance. And we changed the wording around those to... In other words, be the stocks they date or marry or the ones that got away. And today we're broadening that discussion with a panel of experts to talk about their picks. Joining us here in studio, Brianne Gardner, Senior Wealth Manager at Velocity Investment Partners, David Burroughs, President and Chief Investment Strategist at Barometer Capital Management, and Laura Lau, CIO at Brompton Group. Happy Valentine's Day, and thank you all for being here. It's great to have you with us, and our audience loves all of you, so I'm sure they're mm -hmm. going to love this segment. But I guess when it comes to cashing in on stocks that you love, it'd be great to get some top advice for, from all of you. Laura, can I start with you? What's sort of the, the, the shining light to think about on that very subject? I think the stocks that you love, you know, long-term holds, that they are preferably a monopoly or a duopoly, they have pricing power, you know, they have innovation, and you can sleep at night. Right. And there's not a lot of stocks that can do that, actually. That, that can give you that peaceful rest. Yeah. Uh, Brianne, what about for you? Sort of similar philosophy or? Yeah, I think similar to Laura. I think um, companies that have good profitability, uh, we look a lot at where we are in the business cycle um, to depend on, you know, what are those long-term stocks and stocks that we do want to continue to hold. Um, if we can hold the stock forever, we will. Um, if we want to trim it along the way, we will as well. Um, but ultimately, we look at, yeah, fundamentals. Um, of that business, uh, cash flow, strong management from behind the scenes. Um, but again, yeah, as long as you can sleep at night, those are the stocks you want to hold. I mean, I always heard Warren Buffett talking about names that he wasn't thinking about selling at some point. He seems to want to be committed to those stocks over the long term. This would make sense, I guess. Uh, David, from your vantage point, how do you think about this subject? You know, I mean, we're, we're ultimately always looking for companies that we consider to be good to begin with, but are getting better. So ultimately, we love to see companies that the world sees in one light, but things are changing and they could get revalued to a higher level. Now, we do try not to fall in love. <laughs> so we are, we are sellers. Uh, but, you know, ultimately, you're trying to find really high quality companies in areas of the market that are going through some kind of structural change that benefits them for an extended period of time. But this does get into another dynamic of the markets. I mean, to David's point, Laura, you can buy, you can sell, you can do it all literally in the next 10 minutes if you want. Uh, but I guess as an investor, you know, the value of long-term investing is if you, if you pick the right names that let you sleep at night, that, that, that's part of the equation? Yes, that's definitely part of the equation. But I think also, you have, as it, as you know, David said, you got to be pragmatic as well. You can't always fall in love because sometimes things change. And the right. stock you love so much, you know, they may not have been able to keep up. That innovation may not be there, or it's become too large of a weight that, for risk management purposes, you, you do have to trim. I feel like you might have had at least one sleepless night based yes. on what one company yeah. might have said over the years. That's maybe a story for another day. But let's get into some of these specific uh, ideas for investments and, you know, a lot of people going on dates for Valentine's Day. Uh, so we're going to start with this idea of names that you might be interested in, might not necessarily be the long-term play. Uh, Brianne, I'll start with you. Is, is there a name that would sort of fit that mode, that mold for you? Yeah, I think thinking about a stock that we want to date. So, you know, maybe we're like dipping our foot in. We're not too committed longer term. We see a tactical trade opportunity. Uh, for us, that is Granite REIT. Okay. Um, so the Canadian uh, residential or real estate investment trust company that focus on industrial uh, and logistics space uh, pays a great stable 4.4% dividend. Um, I think, too, the real estate sector, I mean, has negative year to date and hasn't really done well over the past two years. Um, but we see stability in the industrial space. And we think Granite Reed is going to participate that. Also on the background of uh, interest rates coming down this year um, and potential and next year as well, we see that Granite Reed will participate and real estate will participate in that as well. So interest rates coming down reduces the debt payment that these companies have to pay, which also ultimately leaves them 
with more uh, cash flow and profitability in their pockets um, and allows them to expand and grow their portfolio. So it ranks uh, eight out of 10 for us over the past five years, has mm -hmm. annualized about 8.8% and potential upside from analysts on the street is about 18%. So it's not necessarily that there's uncertainty in the future, it's that there's opportunity today. Yeah, I see uh, it is a stock that we own and we want to continue to own, but you know, I think 2024 could be the year you maybe serial date, and mm. there are a lot of opportunities out there outside of the Magnificent Seven. Okay, um, on this same subject, David Burroughs, um, what would be the kind of stock that might fit the dating aspect of investing. <laughs> yeah, so you know when we look at the world um, for for dating, there there are lots of companies in industries that are a little more cyclical, right? So there's a time to own them and there's a time not to own them. Now, you know we're we're looking at the energy sector as one that has you know consolidated over the last while. Seasonally, we're getting to a period where it gets a little bit better. I mean, if we look really from the beginning of the bear market in the S and P. The energy sector in Canada is actually up about 40%, but it has retrenched recently. And you know, some of the companies with really long life assets are kind of interesting. So I look at Suncor as one that we would be interested in because it's, uh, it's got really long life assets. Um, it pays a great dividend. So it could start as a date, you gotta take a little risk. It could turn into a long-term relationship. Um, they've, got, uh, they've done a good job in paying down debt there's activist shareholders involved trying to unearth a little bit of value. Uh, and so this one could pay dividends uh, uh, going forward. Okay, so an energy pick in Suncor. Brianne talked about a real estate play. And Laura, you've got a technology idea when it comes to a stock you might date. So I think that, you know, when you think about it, the dating pool is very big. Most of the stocks actually fit in that dating pool, especially in Canada, because we have a lot of deep cyclical stocks as energy, materials, mining, and then a lot of those stocks are in Canada. We are a cyclical economy, so even the banks are cyclical. So I think that in Canada, a lot of the stocks you do date. So the time to own deep cyclicals are the worst. They don't make money. So what we had last year for uh, technology is, in general in the US, the most cyclical part of the economy is semiconductors. So you date the semiconductors, and within semiconductors, the most cyclical is actually memory chips. So memory chips were down 50% last year in terms of prices. So this is the time to buy them because now we're getting some uh, cyclical headwinds. Sorry, sorry, tailwinds. PCs. People are buying PCs after COVID. Mm. We're seeing all these companies starting to build AI data centers. Again, very strong for memory. So we're going to have more AI contact content in phones, PCs, and data centers. So that's very strong for uh, memory chips. So we've picked in this space Micron. And Micron has also on top of that one uh, more contracts with NVIDIA, which is the AI darling, in right. their new AI chips, because some of their new chips have you know, better energy performance and better performance, period.